Welcome everybody to this webinar of webinars for you in cooperation with Politecnico di Milano. And uh, today you join to hear about the title, invest in your education and prepare for a better future. And by discovering the outstanding programs of architecture, design and engineering at Politecnico di Milano. Now, before we go over these topics and you will hear from the speaker who's lined up for you, I'd like to briefly explain to you how this works. My name is Luke Melling. I'm the moderator of today. And basically, you have some options at your fingertips. First of all, you can ask questions at any time. You can do that by writing your questions in the panel called Q&A. When you write them, they will be received, but we will be answering the questions at the end of the session. Now, this is, of course, for the live audience. For the people that are watching the recording, you can still use that box as well. So you can write your questions there. And however, of course, we're not answering them live in this session, but they will be sent by email to the staff so they can still come back to you later. And the same goes for some people. If we don't answer your question, they can come back to you afterwards. So don't worry about that. What else do you see? On the right top, you see also a list of resources, some useful links to, well, uh, the website, for example, of Politecnico Milano or other resources, links that are useful for you, like scholarships or some application requirements. So I would say check that out later at the end and click on them at the end. Because of course, now we like to have your attention for this presentation. And of course, that's why you joined. And uh, we go over to the speaker in Milan and we have with us Chiara Mambretti. Hello, Chiara. Hi, Luke. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, you will take us through these uh, programs that you're offering and all the details about it. So I'll pass it over to you and uh, yeah, have a good session. Thank you so much, Luke. Um, yes, and thanks everybody for being uh, with us today live or uh, if you're watching it, the recording of the webinar. Uh, my name is Chiara. I, I stopped from, from Milan, uh, from my home, because <laughs> uh, uh, nowadays, uh, well, you know, very often we, we are, um, we are live from home uh, due to the COVID situation. Um, but I'm really happy because I can be virtually connected with uh, all of you uh, all over the world. So let's, let's introduce the university to you, Politecnico di Milano, which is a state technical university offering programs in architecture design and, and, and of course, engineering. Uh, in, of course, the, program, the, the university itself is, is based in Italy and in, specifically in the city of Milan. So before we just go through the history or anyway, the features of Politecnico di Milano, I would like you to, to see a video, to watch a video about a typical day at Polymi as it used to be and as we hope it to be very soon um, here in Milan. So let's have a look together. That's uh, that's what we would love the the life of students to be like again in in the future. But yeah, that's a, just a very short input about uh, Politecnico di Milano and the city uh, of Milan. I I believe that some of you have already been in Milan. Um, 
I definitely hope uh, you will uh, you will come if you have never been here. And I would love to show you something, uh, to tell you about Milan and its features and the uh, beautiful uh, sightseeing of the city itself. So let's go quickly, sorry, here to the uh, a slide which describes the location of Milan and some important aspects that you will find here. Milan is located in the north of Italy. It's uh, very, uh, very well connected to other countries, European countries, as you can see here from the map. And it gives you also the opportunity to travel all over Italy very easily by car, by plane, by uh, train, of course, um, because, of course, like the seaside is a couple of hours away from Milan and the mountains are like in one hour or two hours you can reach the, the mountains and go skiing or hiking and enjoy the nature. So. Of course, it's a city, uh, but it's also uh, very well located close to, to the nature. And it's a student city, so you will not be alone in here if you decide to come and study here because there are several universities here and more than 180,000 students study at the moment in the uh, universities located in Milan. It's a very dynamic city. Usually we have a lot of events going on. Um, it's uh, like a fashion city design center. It's a center of technology in the development of industry and economics for sure. And of course it's full of art and culture. Uh, we can say that at the moment we are uh, stuck for uh, because we cannot take advantage of of all these events that usually take place in Milan, but they still go on uh, virtually. So if you want to take part to these events, you can already do that from your place now and just get something about the atmosphere of uh, of the city of Milan. And uh, of course, Politecnico Milano is based here, but it also uh, offers courses in different cities of uh, Lombardia uh, and Emilia Romagna, and uh, in particular in the cities of Como, Lecco, Mantova, Cremona, and Piacenza. All these cities are just a few um, minutes, uh, like a very quick ride of train uh, from uh, Milan. So uh, you will reach Milan if you want to see the city, but in general, you can really enjoy the atmosphere of these smaller uh, cities, but still very uh, interesting. Um, for example, Mantova is, a UNESCO, is an UNESCO city, so you will find a lot of architecture there. You will find our program on architectural design and history, which focuses on, on preservation of cultural heritage. Or we can mention Cremona, for example, which is a, a very important city for music. And there we offer the program in musical acoustic engineering. So you see, there are a lot of opportunities, not only in Milan, but also in the other cities, which, of course, are a little bit cheaper than Milan. So you can consider programs also offered in different uh, campuses of uh, Politecnico di Milano. And concerning the, the main campus of the university, which is located in, uh, in Milan, and this, it is called the Leonardo campus, uh, well, at the moment it's under uh, a very big and important renovation. So um, even if we had <laughs> some uh, uh, stop for the pandemic, but anyway, the, the works went on and the campus is almost ready. So let's say you decide to come study at Politecnico di Milano in, in the next uh, months or years, you will find a brand new campus um, realized based on an idea and a project of Renzo Piano, a very famous alumnus of Politecnico di Milano, an archistar who won the Pritzker Prize, of course, and that, uh, who donated his project to us, to Politecnico di Milano, to create new, new green areas, uh, build new labs, classrooms, and study areas. So I am sure you will enjoy this uh, new campus in case you come uh, and become a student of Politecnico di Milano. I look forward to go back there and enjoy this amazing new campus. 
Um, and why is this important? Because it, it really gave us the opportunity to, to build new labs, which are a very important part of Politecnico di Milano, because of course, Polimi is a place where you uh, learn, where you um, professors teach and students attend classes, but it has also another mission, which is research and technological transfer. So our researchers, professors and students work in the labs to, of course, uh, do research in, uh, in the different fields of architecture, design and engineering. That's why the um, university is the first in Italy for projects funded by the European Commission. Uh, and this is also thanks to the fact that we have four advanced multidisciplinary labs, which are mentioned here in this slide, uh, where students and researchers and professors can work on their projects. And that's something that went on during the pandemic as well. So like we, we didn't stop, of course, we were <laughs> like everyone else in the world shocked uh, about what ha was going on. But uh, we just kept on uh, working in the labs. We contributed, our researchers and professors contributed to the um, production of disinfectant. They tested the materials for for the masks and the, the, the protection devices, of course. Uh, also, some apps were developed, like for um, delivery at uh, home of food and, and so on. And uh, it was uh, by our students and alumni. And at the same time, our students could go on with their learning in distance learning mode. So more than 45,000 students uh, were connected together with one, almost 2,000 professors and attending classes online, took exams online, and of course, graduated online. So everything was possible. Uh, we really cared about not stopping the, um, the career of the students. We knew that many students had to graduate to start a new uh, career or to, to go on with their PhD studies or a master's studies, and, and with the, they needed their um, degree. So that happened and keeps happening also now. We're really proud of this. And we're all also proud of the fact that uh, the atmosphere you can breathe uh, at Politecnico di Milano is an international atmosphere, meaning that almost 7,000 students from more than 100 countries are currently enrolled here at the university. Uh, so you can meet students from all over the world. We have the chance as university staff and professors to uh, get in contact with students uh, with uh, different backgrounds and cultures, of course. And in particular, this is where they uh, come from, as you can see, really from more all over the world. So if you decide to apply to Polymi and come here, you will find this beyond, of course, a high level uh, of education and a very Italian <laughs> experience. Um, so I hope to see you in Milan soon. You will also find some professors coming from other countries so uh, definitely you will not see and meet and, uh, all, only Italian professors, but also some visiting professors from other uh, countries, like the ones I mentioned, mentioned here in the slide. And also this gives a lot to your experience and adds um, a lot to your, um, uh, of course, curriculum and academic experience. And thanks to all I said this, uh, today, thanks to the high level of research, the teaching uh, mode, the uh, international atmosphere you have here, uh, and all the projects that have been students and professors are, have been working on, we have a very good higher um, international reputation. Um, you can just check this information online, of course, uh, on the QS World University Ranking uh, website, um, where we are ranked first in Islam, sixth in the world in the field of design, seventh in the world in architecture, and 20th in engineering among uh, world universities. 
So if you decide to come here, you will definitely know that the level is high and the degree is internationally recognized. Thanks to these, we are also a member of some uh, networks uh, of uh, Italian and prestigious European, sorry, uh, technical universities, such as Idea Liga and us. This gives you the opportunity to go abroad for a period of time and uh, attend classes in the other universities you see listed here. Um, okay, so just to give you an idea of what, what's the uh, educational system in Italy, um, well, let's say that we uh, study 13 years at school, then we enter a Bachelor of Science, uh, which lasts three years, and then we can go on with a Master's degree of two years, or, and then a PhD, uh, which lasts usually three years. Um, today we will focus on these two last two steps, uh, Master of Science and PhD. Um, but just for your information, of course, you can find also Bachelor of Science programs in uh, at Politecnico di Milano. Concerning the master programs, uh, let's have a quick look of the programs offered in architecture. Uh, all the ones you see here are two years and are taught in English. So you will not need Italian language knowledge, but only English language uh, knowledge, of course. And you can see they cover all the fields of architecture. Um, two of them are open also to students who are, who are not graduated in architecture. And I'm talking about urban planning and policy design and landscape architecture, the last two you see in the slide. Um, la while the other ones are more uh, de dedicated to students from um, with an architecture background. Concerning design, well, you said, I said that we are six in the world, and uh, this is uh, um, the educational offer uh, in the field of design. <clears throat> you see that they are definitely linked to all the fields of study uh, of design, and in particular, the program in design and engineering is also open to students with an engineering background with no um, knowledge of uh, design. So in that case, portfolio is not required, while in, for all the other programs, uh, design background is needed. And last but not least, <laughs> of course, these are the master programs in engineering. Um, as I said, the university was established as a school of engineering. So here you see a lot of programs and we are um, offering new and new programs every, um, every year. So um, very soon there will be new programs offered uh, in engineering and just have a look on the website for uh, any updates. I would also like to uh, inform you about a program which is offered together with another university, Politecnico di Torino, and uh, is uh, dedicated to talented students who are willing to work on, on projects in collaboration with the companies. It is called Alta Scuola Politecnica, uh, and uh, it is a program parallel to the Master of Science. So you will be studying the Master, taking exams, working on your projects and during the, the Master, but at the same time you will be part of some groups um, and, and will we'll work in, uh, in groups with students from different fields of study and on, on projects proposed by the companies. So this is a separate application, of course, but you will have this chance. So because research is part of our uh, mission, even at Master of Science level. Uh, the programs offered at uh, Politecnico di Milano are, uh, as I said, like very dedicated to engineering, designing, and uh, architecture. But at the same time, we know that the, the world is <laughs> asking our professionals to be aware of other parts of um, of uh, the study. So the, the, it's important to be very uh, prepared in a specific area, but sometimes it's also important to have uh, knowledge also in other fields related to this, that area. So we open two programs in cooperation with two other universities uh, located in Milan, which are cyber risk strategy and governance and bioinformatics for computational genomics. Um, the students enrolled in these two programs will uh, attend some 
a semester at Politecnico di Milano, another semester at Bocconi University or Università degli Studi di Milano. And the same for the, se the second year of studies. These two programs are really interesting. They are joint degrees and they are in English. And the application goes through the uh, unibocconi.eu website or the unimi.it website. Well, concerning the programs I mentioned before, so except for the, the last uh, two I, I just mentioned with Bocconi and the Università degli Studi di Milano, the application goes through our website, polimi.it slash n. And when the application opens, um, uh, is, is open at the moment until March the 9th, uh, and then uh, it will open again for February intake from May to July only for engineers. Let's say that in general, for your knowledge, uh, maybe you're not thinking uh, of applying for this September 2021, but you are interested in, in, uh, in Politecnico Milano for future years. Usually the application for the first semester, which starts in September, opens one year in advance. So September of the previous year and lasts until March. So just to give you an idea about the timing and when to apply. If you want to apply for September 2021, then of course you can have to keep in mind that the last date to do so is March the 9th. And uh, what about the application? We you will have to check the entry requirements, of course, and which are basically a bachelor degree in the field or in a field related um, to the program you're interested in. Uh, you might be also in the last year of your bachelor degree. So you don't have your degree yet in your hands, but you are going to get it. So you can apply even before getting your degree. Uh, we suggest you to uh, check the, this, the minimum GPA by country on the website because some countries uh, have these uh, additional requirements. And of course, we want you to be aware that you will need to present an English language certificate or an Italian language certificate plus an English language certificate if you want to study in Italian. Here you see a list of the, um, of the accepted uh, certificates of course, everything is also mentioned on the website, and we will be happy to help you if you have any, any doubts uh, about this. Once you know that you have the requirements, you can register online on our website, get the credentials, and start your online application, uh, which is just online, so you don't have to send anything to the university but only enter your university information in the portal, select the master programs you're interested in, uh, up to two programs, and then upload the required documents, which, uh, which is the, usually uh, one of the uh, most required information, uh, of course. And uh, concerning your master of science programs, uh, the fee depends on the family income for European students, while for non-European students it's fixed and it's 3,900 euros per year, per year. Okay, so let's say that this is the amount you pay to, for studying at a top university uh, with high level of research, like getting in a very beautiful place with an international atmosphere, but we really want students to be happy, so we also offer merit-based scholarships and uh, the same does the, uh, the government of Italy. So we, you can be considered to uh, for merit-based scholarships, uh, which cover the tuition fees and might provide you with some pocket money. In this case, you don't have to apply because the, your application for the program is valid also for the scholarship. Um, but uh, if you want to apply for the scholarship offered by the Italian government, then you will have to apply separately and of course check on the websites uh, which are the requirements and which is the uh, the dead, which are the deadlines everything is again available on our website and we will share this information with you in the um, in the follow up email of course and um, in um, in the calls or emails you will send to us i was uh, mentioning before the phd 
um, which is also offered at Politecnico di Milano. The PhD programs last three years here. Um, they cover, you see, very different areas of engineering, design, and architecture. They're really interdisciplinary, and they give the opportunity to the students to go abroad for a period of time to do research. Uh, the PhD program is, um, uh, is, is really active, so the students, the, the, the researchers are uh, actively involved in the research activities, and as I said, they go abroad for congresses, seminars, and uh, research. The application opens usually in May, and the program starts in November. So now it's a little bit early, but uh, on the website, polymi.it slash PhD, you will find the information in a couple of months. Uh, what you need to have is, of course, some master degree in the field uh, of the PhD you're interested in and an English language certificate, plus definitely a, a research project you want to uh, mm, propose to the commission. The program is free of charge, so if you're admitted, you don't pay anything, uh, and you might get a scholarship for, uh, once you are admitted. So let's say that uh, this is also a great opportunity to do research and be innovative and work on our uh, on the future of our world uh, in, in an active way. The um, the, the atmosphere, the experience you will find at Politecnico Milano, uh, whether you come as a bachelor, master, or PhD student, is what you see here on the screen. A lot of joy, of course. Um, you will, can be part of students' associations, uh, uh, practice your sports. Um, by the way, we are also renovating the sports facilities at Politecnico di Milano. You can stay in our accommodation if you book them. Um, be part of the body program, meaning that you get in contact with someone who's already here and uh, can help you before you arrive and while you are here. And then, of course, you can learn Italian or foreign languages, uh, go abroad for an exchange uh, uh, degree. Um, we definitely warmly suggest to take part in the welcome activities that will give you the opportunity to, to uh, meet other students, even virtually, because now these activities go on uh, virtually, uh, but uh, they're still a lot of fun. <laughs> and then, of course, a lot of events are organized by uh, by Politecnico di Milano staff and students. Um, when you finish your academic uh, path, uh, I know it's uh, <laughs> it's far away now because of course it's going to be in two, three, four years. Who knows? Uh, anyway, Politecnico di Milano does not leave you alone. We have a specific program, I'm sorry, office which is called the Career Service, which uh, supports you during and after after your studies with, uh, of course, career guidance, uh, with the organization of job fairs and workshops. Um, they publish also on the website uh, internship and job opportunities every day dedicated to students of Politecnico di Milano. So the website is full of information. Um, even the, uh, these events when were not stopped, so during the pandemic and even now the, uh, the job fairs and workshops uh, are offered uh, in, uh, in distance mode, in virtually, physically, and students can attend and they're really satisfied about this. So just to give you some numbers, these are the employability data of our engineers, architects, and designers. You can see that international alumni uh, are um, employed within one year from graduation in, in a high percentage. And these are the numbers of partners and, and companies that we have agreements with. So let's say that we don't leave the students alone after they finish their studies. Most of the students have a, a job before graduating. And we're really proud of this because, of course, the education we provide is aimed to this to make uh, uh, to, to educate professionals which are who are ready for the job market, um, and you can always rely on the. 
Now, as I promised, I leave you the contacts. So of course the website, which I repeated for <laughs> several times during the presentation, the contact form you can use to get in contact with us. And we strongly, strongly suggest to do so if you have questions. And then of course, the social media. Uh, we know that you are all very um, active on the on overall on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and, and and the other social media. So you can enjoy our posts, stories, and videos on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, Twitter, and of course on LinkedIn. I really. Stop talking now because I'm ready for your questions and I apologize for the technical problem we had before, uh, but I'm sure I, I can answer your questions now. Okay, great. Thanks, Chiara. Indeed, now we go over to the section where you all can answer, ask your questions. I see some of you already did and we are, will be answering them. Um, thank you, Chiara. First of all, I think some of the information has already been explained. Um, for example, I think the scholarship question from Ali, but otherwise let us know if there's something specific that we missed. Um, I go to the question uh, from uh, Shatman and he's saying, if a, a bachelor was completely taught in English, do we need an English certificate as well? No, in that case, you just provide a document from uh, your university attesting that the language was English, so there's no need to provide any additional certificate. Okay, thank you. Um, question from uh, Vadim is asking, is it required to learn Italian to apply for the engineering degree? No, for like all the programs I mentioned before are all taught in English. So there's no need to know Italian. Okay, great, thank you. Nurusan is asking about the minimum GPA or CGPA he's writing for the university. He's located in Kazakhstan. I don't know if there's something specific you can say about this. Yeah, there is no minimum uh, CGPA for students graduated in Kazakhstan, so you can just apply. Great, good to hear. Hope that answer your question. Um, question from Ivan: Do you help international students with the visa application? Okay, for of course we provide the information, meaning that we confirm the admission of the student if he's admitted, and we um, uh, inform the, the the embassy or the consulates about that. And we provide the students with information about the process he has to go through. But yeah, that's that's it. Then of course students has to care have to take care of that process by themselves. Of course, our offices are always of support, so we support students for any questions. But some some things like the visa application is really only managed by the embassies and consulates. Okay. Thank you. A question from Bereket is asking, do you have joint degree programs from universities outside of Italy? Yeah, yeah, of course. We have more than 300 exchange uh, programs and also several uh, joint and double degrees. So that's definitely something you can check on our website um, to know how it works and uh, how many and where uh, we have agreements. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question came in, um, if it's about the housing, do you provide with dormitories for couples? Uh, not really, unfortunately. So usually if you come together and you want to live together, you should find a place like a flat or an apartment uh, by your own. Okay. Thank you. Um, Yiling is asking um, about the DSU, I think that's the scholarship, how yeah. do I apply for that? All right, that's a, a different chapter, <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. there is a separate application you have to fill out, uh, usually in the summer, so now it's a little bit early for that. Uh, you will need to provide some documents attesting your financial situation, your family income and so on, um, and on the basis of that the, you will know if you get the scholarship or not. But let's say that on the website you will find much more details, uh, probably from, uh, uh, I would say, May on, you will find the details for next academic year. Great, thank you. 
Question from Ivan. Uh, when do you publish admission and scholarship results? Okay, if you already applied, the uh, results for first call will be out in the first week of uh, February. And by the end of February, you will know also about the scholarships. Uh, while if you're applying in the second call, the application, sorry, the results will be out. In and the same for the uh for the scholarships it might be even before of course because some professor just evaluate in a, on a rolling base but uh let's say april is a maximum deadline okay thank you um vadim is asking what is the most important application criteria is it gpa motivation letter or anything else well, it depends on the program you apply for, because if, if you talk about design and architecture, I, I definitely would say that the, the portfolio is the most important document. Uh, while if you talk about the engineering programs, then the GPA um, and, of course, your CV are, are, are really important. Okay. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Vadim. Otherwise, let us know. Um, question from Hab Lamu asking, how many available spots are there actually for the architecture programs? Okay, that, that depends on the on the program because as as you could see in the slides, there are several programs. So each of them have, have different uh, available seats. Uh, so I cannot give a number <laughs> today, but you can mm -hmm. always contact us and we will share it with you. Great. Um, Ali is asking about the approximate living cost, and also, is there an option to find a student job? Mm -hmm. Okay, for the, the living costs, of course, it depends on where you stay, uh, and also where if you stay in Milan or in the other cities. But in general, let's say for Milan, you can consider about eight hundred to one thousand euros per month. Uh, because unfortunately the rent in Milan is quite high and uh, quite expensive, but um, there are different solutions, uh, discounted solutions for, for students. So um, you can uh, also pay less. In the other campuses and the other cities is cheaper, so the rent will, be co it will cost less. So you might consider about 500, 600 euros per month. Uh, concerning jobs, students can work. Uh, in non-European students can work up to 20 hours per week, while European students have no uh, no limit in this, from this point of view. Um, we suggest students to first come, uh, enroll, uh, start their studies, understand how it works, and then look for a job. Not not like come and and think that I've like straight away you will find uh, a job position mm -hmm. because it might be hard. Um, but you can also work in the in the in the university. So like in the offices, help us, and uh, in the labs and so on. So that's also an option. Okay, thank you. Salvador is asking, um, I'm in the process of obtaining a university de degree. Can I apply already? And also, if it's obtained, must it be apostilled and legalized by the country of origin? Okay, for the application, yes, you can apply, uh, even if you haven't finished yet, but you're in the last year, or even if you have finished, but you don't have your degree in your hands yet. Uh, concerning the apostille and so on, no. For the application, you don't need that. You just need the um, the stamp from the university or signature from the registrar's office. But for the enrollment, you will need apostille, yes. Um, Aristan is asking how much I need to score in the IELTS for a scholarship. Okay, for um, in general, the minimum we accept is six for the IELTS. Uh, this score does not influence the scholarship results. It's just important to have it to present it. Otherwise, you will not be considered for the scholarships. But it's not important how high is the score. Okay, thank you. Let's see, we got some more questions coming in. Um, Bereket, 
What is the average cost of the dormitory? You mentioned something, uh, the living cost in Milan. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. the dormitory, if it's there or if you can compare it to another option. Yeah, the, the dormitory is about f between 400 and 500 euros per uh, month in Milan. Uh, it's usually about three to 400 euros per month in the other uh, campuses the outside so if you if you live in a private flat with other students uh, um, if you share a room you might pay about 250 300 euros per month in milan but a room for yourself is going to be not less than 500 euros per month okay um so Ivan was just missed uh, the dates and uh, maybe it's for people that join in later or watching the recording useful to know a little bit about the admission dates and um, also the scholarship results when they are available. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the dates, like the application dates are um, like from now, the application is open for September intake until the 9th of March. Uh, and the results will be out uh, in, in the month of April, admission and scholarship results. Perfect. Thank you. Um, a question actually from Jose Antonio. We wrote us before the session asking about the tuition costs. Um, just to emphasize that, could you give an indication yeah, sure. about that? Of course, for um, well, non-European students, the tuition fees are 3,900 euros per year. I'm talking about the master degrees. Uh, while European students pay according to their financial situation, the minimum is 900 euros per year and maximum 3,900. Perfectly. And regarding the DSU scholarship SIAT is asking what is approximately the the amount of that? Okay, that that, that depends again on the financial situation of the student. Right. Usually it is a tuition fee waiver and then some other uh, services or benefits or pocket money, but it's uh, hard to answer because uh, it mm. really depends on the on the student's situation. Perfect. Thank you. A question from Ose, uh, who wrote us also before the session, and hopefully he's joining to watch the answer on demand on the recording. He's wondering about the situation um, for September. Um, I know it's still far away, um, but do you have any idea um, if it will be uh, live in person and also when actually the academic start will be? Mm -hmm. Well, for September, usually the program starts at the end of September uh, or middle, depends, but let's say around the 20th of September. Uh, concerning the current situation, uh, we don't have specific details yet, of course, because we live day by day, I would say, week by week. Mm -hmm. um, in general, I might say that uh, probably in September a blended mode will be granted anyway. So students who are not uh, in the position to come here because of uh, COVID, of course, uh, will probably will have the possibility to study uh, from abroad and then join the academic year and join the classes in person as soon as possible. But this is just a uh, something that might happen. Uh, at the moment, the students are still learning in distance learning mode. Um, we probably, this probably will go on until the end of the second semester, which is gonna be until June, um, with maybe some more classes, in-person classes, but it's really unpredictable at the moment. Um, we really hope to, have the possibility to deliver in-person classes for some students, at least in the uh, in September intake. Okay, thank you, Chiara. I hope that gives an answer for everybody. And uh, yeah, stay out, watch out for uh, the website uh, as mentioned as well um, by Chiara. There will be updates following what's happening in the next couple of months. 
and hopefully that helps you. Um, before we go over to some last questions, uh, we actually have a question, well, three uh, brief questions for the audience. And we'd like to know to you, as you can see on the screen now, if you're interested in applying, are you considering it at this stage? Let us know if it's a yes or you're not sure yet or no. And this goes for both the live audience as well as the people that are watching the recording. You can participate as well. So let us know if you're interested. I should say, don't forget to hit submit at the bottom so we get your answer. And I see people are now doing that. So thank you for your answers. All right, so I'll leave it a couple seconds more and we go over to the next question. And that is, do you expect to apply for the program for enrollment in 2021? So if you said yes to considering to apply, do you expect to apply for the program this year? Thanks to also let us know if it's a yes, not sure or no. And to hit submit. Okay. Great, thank you for your answers. Then the last question, and we'll leave it open for a couple of minutes. If you're interested, but you do not expect to apply, why is that? So you are interested, maybe you joined the webinar to watch more, but you're not expecting to apply. Let us know what is stopping you from doing that. It would be interesting for us to know if it's out of factors outside of us, or if it's something that can be fixed or uh, maybe Polytechnic in Milano can help you with. So if you're interested and do not expect to apply, let us know. I'll leave that open as mentioned for a little bit, a couple of minutes, so you can all fill that out and think about that. Um, I have a question that came in from Syed, and that is, um, is it possible to complete the enrollment procedure without having a student visa? Because now the Italian consulate is not accepting visa documents, um, although the deadline was communicated to being the 31st of January. You know, that's right. basically yeah. the end of the week. Uh, yeah, the 4 February intake, I guess. Um, well, if you don't uh, get a visa, you you can, I mean, you can, technically you can apply, but then you, your enrollment, sorry, enroll, but your enrollment will be canceled if you don't get a visa. So if you already know that you cannot apply for a visa because of the reason you mentioned, uh, first of all, please get in contact with the office in charge uh, you should have the contacts and you will find them on the website um, and we will support you, but I would not pay the amount, uh, the first installment amount, because it's um, it's really risky. I mean, you will get a refund uh, if your enrollment is cancelled, but um, it's, it's not really a good solution. Okay. I hope that helped you, Syed, in that matter. Thank you. And um, with that, we are coming to the end of the session. So thank you for that. Um, if, as mentioned, um, there's still a personal question or for the people that are writing the questions through the recording, um, we can come back to those. So the questions are being recorded um, and will be sent to the staff of Politecnico Milano. So they can come back to you probably by email. Yeah. And, and um, yeah. yeah, with that, we round it off. Um, from my side, first of all, everybody, thank you for joining. We had people from different parts of the world joining in. Always great to see. We hope it was useful for you. And uh, of course, Chiara, thanks for making your time available. <laughs> thank we you. Thank that. you so much. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I, I hope it was uh, informative for our students. I hope to to get a lot of yes <laughs> from beyond <laughs> the questions we <laughs> we pulled out. And uh, thank you, Luke, for the support. Great. Thanks a lot, and uh, goodbye, everybody. 
Have a good day. Bye. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.